By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are at the Color Clash. This is an online tournament where we all play with mono colored decks. This was an online Timmy Talks tournament. This is round one and in round one, you're going to see my mono blue deck in action. I've called it the one ring. And in a moment, I'll show you why I've given it that title. You know, I've got a lovely deck photo. I can't wait to tell you all about my deck. I am taking on Yurian and Yurian is playing a mono red deck. So this is mono blue versus mono red. Now, um, to make this color clash mono color tournament as much fun as possible, we did put some rules into place. An important rule that I'd like you to know about is the fact that we're playing without sideboards. Because I thought if you play sideboards, you're constantly going to see the same kind of color hate. Of course, you can play uh, the color hate main board. You can put it in your first 60. That is all up to you. You know, that's a, a personal choice that you can make but just to give you that information you're not you're not going to see a lot of sideboard cards you know coming in because we're playing without any sideboards in this event another rule that we have is that we're only playing with eight artifacts per deck and also all the artifacts are uh, restricted so you can only play with one of each again this is to make sure that this mono color tournament is really about the mono colors of magic and not about like what's the best artifact deck and what's the best support color for that like i really wanted to make this about the colors and magic the five colors and magic um if you want to know more about the event because there are some more specific rules please check out the description below because there you will find a link to the tournament website with all the decks uh, and with the rules and spoiler alert also with the results so make sure that you know where to click that you don't see all the results already this is a uh, like i said a turn one match that we're going to look at today um, and I'm going to start with the deck text now if you want to skip the deck text as always you can check the same description below to find several timestamps one of the timestamps reads MTG games click on there it'll take you straight to the game so you can just skip the uh, the deck text or maybe check the deck text afterwards it is all up to you okay now that you're fully informed I'm going to start with the decks I'm going to start with the deck of my opponent Yurian let's have a look and here we see the deck of my opponent, Yurian. Actually, not the deck, just a few cards. I don't have a deck photo, unfortunately, but I do have some knowledge of the deck. So we know it's mono red. So, I mean, he, you know, he's playing Chain Lightning Bolt and stuff like that. But he's also doing a lot of cool stuff. Like, I know Yurian quite well. He's also a Dutch player, uh, plays in, the, in Amsterdam like myself. So we meet offline as well a lot. And, I mean, he's a romantic when it comes to Magic the Gathering. And what I mean by that is that he always wants to do these cool quirky things and see if he can make it work. And I think this this picture here kind of shows that as well. So he's playing Nevenerals Disc and then with creatures that work together quite well with the disc, such as Often Troll because it can regenerate, such as Bull Lightning because, you know, it comes into play and it's destroyed at the end of the turn. So it doesn't really care much about the disc. And then he's also playing with Safe Haven. And I think that's so cool. So Safe Haven is this card from the dark, right? And what it does, it's a land, to and tap, remove target creature you control from the game. This ability is played as an interrupt, so you can do that whenever you want. Then, during your upkeep, you can sacrifice the save haven to return all creatures that it has removed from the game directly into play. So the cool thing is you can put your creatures into the save haven before you use your disc, right? And then we also see another card here, that's Inferno. So Inferno, again, also works together quite well with and ball lightning and regeneration creatures but also with save haven because inferno is a card from the dark two red and five to cast for an instant but i mean it is seven <laughs> it's it's pretty steep uh and it reads inferno does six damage to all players and all creatures this is actually a really good card against me i think um so yeah that's a problem right and what he can do then of course is put the creatures that he wants to keep alive into the safe haven prior to casting the inferno safe haven is also quite cool with the bull lightning so there's actually a lot of safe haven synergies in this deck so i'm i'm curious to see if we're going to see the haven in action now a little side note here at this tournament all the non-basic lands are also restricted so that means he's only playing with one safe haven though and only of course with one disc because again the artifacts are also restricted but still i do like the synergies and the little plants he's got with safe haven and even if he doesn't find a safe haven i do like the synergy between a bull lightning and inferno i think it's super cool right you attack with your bull lightning deal six damage the bull lightning is going to die anyway so after that you like cast your inferno and deal even more damage. I mean, you do need a lot of mana to pull that off, right? Because look at Inferno is seven, Bull Lightning is 
three. So we're talking about 10 mana if you want to do that in the same turn. But it's all about the dream, isn't it? It would be super cool to see it, uh, you know, happen in this match. I think I'll be happy already if, if Yurian can just, you know, cast a Save Haven and do some silly stuff with it. I think Save Haven is also a great card to play um, against Control Magic. You know, a card that I play with. So in, in response to Control Magic, he can use a Save Haven and, and yeah, put his creature into safety, which is quite nice. Um, I also think that he's playing with a lot of flyers like Granite Gargoyle, for example, and then of course use that in combination with Earthquakes. There, there are just a lot of wanky little tricks in his deck. It's also like a mono red trickster deck uh, instead of like a regular mono red aggro build, right? This is really something else. So I'm looking forward to play against it. And I think it's really cool, Yurian, that you always bring these original Bruce to the table. It simply makes it so much more fun, you know, because I know when I'm playing against Yurian, I'm going to see like new stuff and things I don't see that often. And that just brings a smile on my face. And that's also an important part of the game, isn't it? I mean, you play against these lean, mean decks so often. It's just cool sometimes to play against something else and, and also see the other 95% of, of the cards in the meta, right? That's actually one of the reasons why I decided to have tournaments like this with specific rules, like this monocolor clash, to try to see new cards like and let them shine in a different format. Anyway, this is the deck of uh, Yurian. Now let's take a look at my deck, the quest for the one ring. And here we see my deck. So it's called Timmy's Quest for the One Ring. And as you can see, it's mono blue, right? Um, and I've called it Quest for the One Ring because I'm playing, and I'm very excited about this. I'm playing with Ring of Maroof. So Ring of Maroof is an artifact from Arabian Nights, five to cast, five and tap, exile the ring. The next time you would draw a card uh, this turn, instead put a card you own from outside the game into your hand. Now there's been an errata on Ring of Maroof in old school that you can only pick up cards from your sideboard. Now I'm personally a little bit sad about it because I think the card is bad enough to just allow players to pick up any card from anywhere. So if you play a tournament that you would use this, you can just shout out and say, who has this in this card? Cause I really need it. You know, and somebody could give you the card. I kind of like that idea of the Ring of Maroof. So the way we're playing it in this tournament is that, you know, since we're playing online, we're playing from our from our homes, you can just pick a card from your collection. Of course, it has to be a card that's legal in this format, and it has to be a card, of course, from old school, right? Because it has to be legal, and it has to be a card of the color that you're playing, or, or an artifact, I guess. But um, yeah, that's how we're playing the Ring of Maroof. But if you think about the ring, it's really not that good, right? Because it's five to cast, five to use, and remember, you instead of drawing the card you normally draw in the turn, so you have to use it in your turn, um, you know, you would draw another card, right, from outside the game. So basically, you want to use this in your upkeep, and then when it's your draw step, instead of drawing your normal card from your library, you get this replacement card. Yeah, you're not even drawing it. So if there's an Underworld Dreams on the table, you don't take one damage, for example, right? You just pick up the card. But I'm just really excited to play with this because it means that in a way I'm playing with a sideboard, even though there's no sideboard in this format. So it's kind of a cheeky way uh, of using it. And I'm just looking forward to it. You know, if I can use the ring, this tournament, my tournament is made. You know, you don't use this often. So if I can just use it one time, I'm already happy. Now, if we look at the rest of the deck, there's also another card that's probably, you know, uh, is, is going to draw a lot of attention. That card is Invoke Prejudice. So I'm playing with Invoke Prejudice in this deck because it's so good, of course, in a Color Clash meta. But this card, of course, is, um, you know, is banned by WotC because of the image on it. So I'm playing with the replacement card because I don't want to uh, hurt anybody's feelings. So I'm playing with a card from a, a set, a proxy set that's called New Dawn. Now I've talked about this on my uh, channel before when I opened the New Dawn card set. So if you want to know my opinion about, um, you know, this whole WotC banning specific cards out of the, the 93, 94 card pool, uh, you know, you can click on the video, the info card that's appearing right now, and you can listen to my opinion if you care about that. I think it's up to everybody to uh, you know, make their own decisions. Uh, but apart from uh, the banning of the image, uh, the card itself I think is a very interesting card and a very cool and unique card in Magic. So it's four blue to cast for an enchantment. It reads, whenever an opponent casts a creature spell that doesn't share a color with the creature you control, counter that spell unless that player pays X, where X is its mana value, right? Um, so if I have one blue creature on the board, it means that my opponent, who's playing mono red in this case, has to pay double for all their mono red creatures. So for example, an Orcish Artillery that Yurian is playing is now costing six 
instead of three. Like that's insane, right? And if he cannot pay it, it's going to be countered. So it's probably just going to keep it in hand. So I, I think it's just absolutely an awesome card and hopefully I can use it in this, uh, in this matchup. Now, if we look at the rest of the deck, a big part of the deck just looks at my normal, like, Timmy Spellbook deck. But be because, of course, all the artifacts are restricted, uh, and I can only play with eight artifacts in total, I had to make a pretty, like, strict, uh, you know, strict choices. Like, I had to take out some of my IC Manipulators, if you compare it to my regular Mono Blue deck. I just had to make a few difficult choices. I'm also not playing with any city in the bottles, not even a single one in this uh, match. Also, because I'm playing with more Arabian Nights, Myself, I'm playing with Desert, I'm playing with Diamond Valley, I'm playing with uh, Library of Alexandria, and of course I'm playing with the Ring of Maruf. I'm not playing with Surrender Pafritz. Maybe that's a mistake, but we'll just have to find out. But I have to admit the main reason I'm not playing with Surrender Pafritz is because I don't have the original Arabian Nights copies. And I just, I, I, I like the way the deck looks. You know, I just think it's really cool, so I decided not to go with that. I am uh, playing with two Unsummons that I'm quite excited about. I'm really looking forward to see if the Unsummons work. I like the kind of synergy between Unsummon and Counterspell. That's very like old school. A lot of people used to do that back in the day. And I thought, you know what, let's just give it another try and see how good Unsummon really is. I think the card's a bit underestimated. Also, Unsummon works really well with Invoke Prejudice, for example. So there are some nice synergies there. Um... And I like the fact, the last thing about Unsummon, that you can also use it to defend yourself, right? If somebody plays removal on your creature, you can Unsummon it back to your hand and then recast it again. So it's this versatile card that you can use offensively and defensively. That's what I really like. Um, talking about little synergies in the deck, I also like Diamond Valley in combination with Control Magic. You know, I steal a, a creature from my opponent as soon as my opponent finds, for example, a Disenchant to destroy my Control Magic in response I can eat the creature with Diamond Valley, right? And then at least my opponent doesn't get the creature back. So that's also a nice win-win. Uh, I think overall that Mono Blue is probably going to be one of the stronger colors. The thing I worry about is, you know, blue is always more a control color, at least the way I'm playing it. Of course, you can make an aggressive deck with Surrender Pafritz, with Flying Man, with Lord of Atlantis. So you can make a really good aggro deck. But, you know, I chose to kind of stick with the, the Timmy Spellbook philosophy of playing more control mode in blue. Uh, that does make that does mean that it's vulnerable to aggro decks. And since we're playing mono colored, I'm expecting a lot of aggro decks. So I don't know if it's if it's that good. Then again, if there are a lot of aggro decks, Protocol Sorcerer is probably really good. It's really helped me out in a lot of matches against mono green. So you know, we'll just have to wait and see. I'm a little bit scared because you know I know how good mono red is and how quickly mono red can burn you, and that you just don't have any time to do anything else. At least I don't have to worry about four vices in this tournament. You know, that's that's something. Anyway, this is my deck. We looked at the deck of my opponent. That means we're ready. Let's go to the match. Game number one, here we go. So my opponent, Yurian, on the left playing mono red. And I'm playing on the right playing mono blue. Oh, look at this. Library of Alexandria, the first card I play in this tournament. Insane. I'm so sorry, Yurian. I mean, this is going to be really tough. Oh, strip mine though. Strip mine. I'm actually, it's weird, I know, because I'm happy that he's stripping my Loa, but I think for the match, it's just way more interesting. Anyway, stripping it away, at least it was able to draw a card from it. Um, but yeah, probably I have to discard here now because I don't have a lot in, of cards in my deck that I can play with just one mana. I have a Mox Sapphire, I have a Soul Ring. That's about it. I mean, you're not going to unsummon anything at this stage in the game. So probably have to make a choice now to see uh, what I need to uh, put in the graveyard. Yeah, discarding an unsummon here. That's unfortunate though. I really like that card. Anyway, seven in hand, passing the turn to my opponent. And we'll just have to wait and see. Both still on 20. First round match of the color clash. Ooh, he's gonna tap two red. Ooh, there it is, the Chaos Orb. That is really good. Don't have a lot of weapons against the Chaos Orb in blue. There's my second blue mana. So now I've got counter magic online. I really wonder if Yurian is going to flip on a land. I think he is. So he's going to flip on a land. I'm going to have a one blue floating. And there you go. So that's a hit. 
And actually, technically speaking, I don't know what island he's gonna hit. So if I wanna do that thing with having a blue floating, I should tap them both. Anyway, he can go to the main phase, uh, to the combat, then to the second main, and then he can still cast something because then that blue man is out of my mana pool. There's another island and a pass. Probably, yeah. I know my deck so well. So let's see what Yurian can do. I think his role in this matchup is really the person to play out the threats at the start of the game. And I'm just gonna try to survive. And then as the game goes on longer, ooh, this is a really good card, Black Vice. Remember, artifacts are restricted. Oh, this counter spell is so important. I mean, Vice is such an enemy for my deck strategy because I'm going slow, you know? I wanna control, don't wanna go fast. So I've got six in hand, finding a soul ring here. Okay, gonna tap there. So I don't have any counter magic open now, or mana open, I should say. I'm gonna play a diamond valley. And there's a prodigal sorcerer. And there's a bolt though on the sorcerer. So the sorcerer is gone, but I'm gonna gobble it up with my diamond valley. So that's something gonna go up to 21. Pass the turn. Let's see what's gonna happen next. Yurian can untap his mountains. Let's see what he's going to do. There's another land for him. Tapping three, are we gonna see a bull lightning? Ooh, an orcish artillery. So this is a one three creature. You can tap it to deal two damage to any target and then Yurian takes three damage from the artillery. And uh, I think the diamond valley could be quite important in this match because it means I can always get some life for my creatures. That's quite important against Mono Red. Gonna tap four, probably a ghost ship here. Maybe asking about the artillery again. It's a card you don't play against that often. Yeah, there's the uh, ghost ship. So this is a two, four flyer from the dark and for three blue, you can regenerate it. And it's got four toughness. So that means if I sack it to the valley, I gain four life. So maybe Yurian has another bolt and then he can kill it in combination with the artillery. And look at that, he's using the artillery, okay, on my ship. So two damage there on the ship. I mean, I'm sure it's gonna die now. Oh, changing his mind. It looked like he had an earthquake in hand, but of course it doesn't fly. Oh, there's a chain lightning, yeah, that works. I thought I saw an earthquake there. Anyway, I'm now I'm gonna sack it to the Diamond Valley and I'm gonna gain four life. And that's, I think, a little bit of a problem here for Yurian because yes, he's killing my creatures, but I'm also gaining life. And it's it's basically a card for card in this scenario. Anyway, untapping here. I mean, look at my life total. I'm already on 25. Yurian on 17 because of his own orcish artillery. There's a maze of if. Oh, that's quite good as well. Gonna tap for another ship, perhaps. What are we gonna see? There's a jam day tome. Ah, oh, that's really good. I can start drawing some cards. That's bad news for Yurian. He's got to get rid of the tome, play a shatter on it or something. Because this is the game I want to play, right? I've got full control. I've got life. I've got the maze of it. I got card draw with the book. I mean, I'm all good. The only thing I don't have at the moment is magic open, um, mana open to counter. I mean, okay, here we see a chain lightning. I'm a little bit surprised about this move, to be honest, because I'm so high up on life. I mean, he's still of 22, so I would have expected him to keep the chain in hand, maybe wait till I play another creature. Then again, maybe he's got other tricks up his sleeve. Maybe Wheel of Fortune, for example. And Yurian again uh, missing a land drop, by the way. I believe earlier in the, in the match he missed a land drop, and now he's missing one again, so he's quite low on lands. Passing the turn here. And I'm, of course, very lucky with that soul ring. That really helps. Because now on the end step of Yurian, I can start drawing extra cards, right? With the Gem Day Tome. So Yurian really in the tank here. Playing a bolt here to the face. Like normally these decks, they really worry me. Like the chain and the bolt decks. And of course, in combination with the artillery dealing extra damage. But I'm not that worried because I gained just so much life from the Diamond Valley already. I mean, I'm still on 19. I'm not that concerned. 
and drawing extra cards with the gem they tome. So it's, it's looking really good for me so far, but I have to start playing out threats though. There's another island, four cards in hand. I mean, an air elemental would be great. Ma Moti Jin would be even better. Anyway, tapping two, it seems untapping again. It looks like I'm just passing the turn, which is, which is fine as well, of course. I mean, I can just draw extra cards, keep my life total up. Ooh, there's some more pressure from Nether Shadow here. There's a uh, Granite Gargoyle 2-2 two -two Flyer. And for one red, you can give it plus O plus zero. Uh, sorry, plus O plus one, of course. So you can uh, pump the toughness. Works quite well with Diamond Valley because of that, by the way. Drawing extra cards here with the Tome on the end step of Yurian. And the Granite Gargoyle has a, an amazing flavor text. So if you don't know it yet, Check it out, read that flavor text, it's fantastic. Ooh, look at that, I'm tapping, I'm gonna do something, tapping four. There's another ghost ship, so the 2-4 flyer from the dark is back. Don't have enough mana though to also keep regeneration mana open, and also I don't have enough mana now to draw an extra card with the tome. There's a safe haven, so we, this is really sweet. He's playing with cards like um, Inferno, which uh, combo really well with Safe Haven. So it would be sweet to see that. And of course, Safe Haven is great protection against uh, Control Magic. So Safe Haven, a land from the dark, a two and tap, and you can put a creature you control in the Safe Haven. And then during your upkeep, you can sack the Safe Haven if you want to, and then all the creatures in the Haven, they are uh, returned back into play. And here's the attack with the Gargoyle, choosing to send it back with the Maze of If. I don't want to block it on the ship because I'm worried about a potential, uh, you know, another bolt and I didn't have regeneration mana open. Tapping five here, are we going to see an air elemental? Ooh, Ring of Maroof. This is really sweet. So Ring of Maroof, a card from Arabian Nights. Five to cast, five tap and sack. Choose a card from outside the game. So I can choose any card, for example, a blue elemental blast, but I'm probably going to look up something cooler if I use it. And then the next time you would draw a card that turn, you take that card instead. So Ring of Maroof is his cheeky way of still playing with the sideboard in this format where we don't play with the sideboard. So really excited. Hopefully it can stick. And I think a cool card to look up, I think maybe is Volcanic Eruption. I mean, because with the eruption, I can destroy the mountains and like kill all the creatures at the same time and deal some damage. That would be so devastating for Yurian, you know? Anyway, let's first see what he can do. So he's played a mountain. So he's got now four mana and of course the save haven. Now the save haven unfortunately doesn't tap for mana. So you can only use it for the special ability. Same thing uh, goes for the Diamond Valley Maze of If, by the way. It's kind of in that in that perspective weird that Library of Alexandria, for example, and taps for mana and is so super good with his other ability, you know, drawing extra cards. It's just such a sick, sick card. It's so good. Anyway, uh, Yurian having four cards in hand now. Staring down at that Maze of If, at that Ghost Ship, at that Diamond Valley, but more importantly, worried probably about the Ring of Maruf. So really in the tank. I mean, if I were him, maybe I would just keep mana open to use the safe, safe haven in response. Putting his cards back, passing the turn it seems. Or not. Yeah, passing the turn. So I'm gonna untap. Now in my upkeep, I think I gotta use the ring, right? Got to do it. Gonna use the ring, right? I hope so. This is awesome. So now I'm using the ring, hopefully. Yeah, we're reading it now. I mean, this is a card you don't use often. I've actually used it once before. That was at a real life tournament. That was a lot of fun. And that was with that restriction that you could only find something from the sideboard. Oh, look at this. Oh, Volcanic Eruption, this card is so cool. Three blue and X, destroys X mountains, and then deals damage to um, all creatures and all players 
equal to the amount of mountains that are destroyed. So next turn when I untap, because it's now in my hand, next turn when I untap, I can play this beauty. I can destroy all the mountains of Yurian, but then I also do four damage to everything, right? So I'm going to lose my ghost ship, but I don't mind, you know, because I can eat my ghost ship up with the uh, Diamond Valley. Of course, Nether Shadow can use a safe haven. He's tapping three though. What is he gonna do? Playing often troll. That's an interesting decision. I think, to be honest, I think I would have kept mana open to put, for example, the granite gargoyle in the safe haven. I mean, of course, he can regenerate the often troll, so he doesn't have to worry about the volcanic eruption. But to kill the often troll, I mean. But now I am gonna kill the other creatures. So I'm reading this card because, to be honest, this is the first time. Outside of, I think maybe in 94 I once cast it because we just played with whatever we had at the time. But this is the first time I'm casting it like in 20 years. Like this is just insane. Yeah, I'm gonna cast it. Oh, this is so cool. Look at my hand again though. Come on, cast the, cast the thing. You gotta do it. It is so cool. It, it doesn't happen every day that you're using a ring of maruf finding out your volcanic taking a volcanic eruption out of your revised collection to cast it i mean this is super cool so it looks like he's going to use going to put maybe a regeneration shield on the often troll but i haven't cast it yet so i guess i've got other options but to be honest i think i should just cast the thing i mean come on okay eating the ship there we go and now I'm casting it. Okay, so look at that. So I can X, so it's three blue to cast, and then I pay four, so I'm gonna destroy four mountains. Now, Yurian has exactly four mountains, so I'm gonna destroy all the mountains. And then we see the regeneration shield being used by Yurian, and now it's gonna exactly kill the creatures and deal four damage to all of us. Now, he's also gonna use the artillery, it seems, which I'm not sure if that's a good move, you know? I mean, he's hurting himself for three as well. Then again, I'm not dealing a lot of damage, so. So we're both taking four damage. I'm taking six damage in total because of the artillery and my opponent's taking seven damage because of the artillery. And yeah, that's my turn. But I mean, Yurian has no mountains anymore. So, oh, finding a mountain from the top of the deck. That's good for him. But I'm feeling good. He's gonna attack, I can maze it, no problem. Now I can untap, and again, I'm still on a pretty high life total, so I don't have to worry about direct damage. That's my biggest concern playing against these mono red decks. If they get you like on, on like 10 life, you have to start worrying about, uh, about your health, you know, because of all the direct damage. Anyway, tapping the soul ring, it seems. There's my chaos orb. Probably gonna be nasty here, flip on that last mountain of Yurian here. Uh, I feel kind of dirty, I'm so to Yurian. But I have to do it. Ooh, almost missed. Did you see that flip? That wasn't a great one, but hey, it hit. The mountain is gone. And what a long game one, by the way. But um, I, I have to say the entire game, I kind of feel like I have it under control. And now, of course, Yurian has no more lands anymore. He can't even regenerate his often troll. So that is, uh, that's quite tough. Tapping six, are we gonna see a Mahamoti Jin? If so, there's the Moti. If so, this game is gonna be over quite soon. Yurian already on 10. After taking six points of damage from his own Orcish artillery and four from the volcanic eruption. So probably gonna attack here, put him on five. Looks like I'm gonna tap even more, tapping four. I'm going to play Invoke Prejudice. So this is the enchantment from Legends that's uh, kind of banned by WotC, right? And uh, that's why I'm using a cover card for it. And it reads that now my opponent has to pay double for all the creatures that don't share colors with my creature. So in other words, if he wants to cast an often troll now, it's going to cost him six to cast or else it's countered. So this is really tough. I mean, Yurian is uh, it's the end of the road. For Yurian here in game number one. Now remember, this is only game number one. And we don't have sideboard. So we're quickly going to shuffle up. And we are going to catch back up with you in game number two. But what an exciting game one. Hopefully we can give you the same fireworks in the second one.
Game number two, here we go. So Yuyan on the play with his mono red deck, starting with a mountain pass into turn. And now let's see what I can do in game two, if it's going to be as spectacular as game one. And the nice thing is in this tournament, you can earn, ooh, Ankh of Mishra. That is a pain in the, so Ankh is an artifact for two. Every time you play a land, you take two points of damage. So you see me here taking two points, going to 18. What I wanted to say, oh, I'm gonna cast something for two. Nope, changing my mind. No Felwer Stone, for example. Probably just wanna keep my counter magic open here. But what I wanted, oh, I am gonna cast something. Okay, there's a time walk. Not really sure if that's a good move. I mean, I'm getting an extra turn, right? And I can play an extra land, but it's gonna do two points of damage. I wonder what else I have in hand. I think in a lot of cases, it's better to like keep the time walk for later. As, yeah, no follow-up play, nothing. So I, I, I can understand why I was hesitant with playing out the time walk. I think I shouldn't have, to be honest. Anyway. Uh, Yurian here also taking damage from his own Ankh, so he's gonna drop to 18. There's a Granite Gargoyle, so the 2 2 flyer. Let's see if I have a counter spell for this. Or maybe next turn I'm gonna play a Ghost Ship, that's also a great blocker for the Granite Gargoyle. But what I wanted to say earlier is that in this tournament, every game win gives you a point. Hey, there's a Psionic Blast taking care of the uh, Gargoyle. Does mean two more points of damage for me, dropping to 14. So every game win gives you a point. So even if you've, um, it's not a best of three, right? You can lose two to one and then you still get a point for that one game victory in the tournament. So we always play three games. So even if I win this game number two, we're still gonna go to a game number uh, three. Anyway, playing out another land. So that Ankh is really doing a lot of work for Yurian. Look at my life total. I'm on 12, he's still on 18. And I think this is really what his deck wants to do, right? Get me low as quickly as possible and probably finish it off with direct damage. He's just gonna pass the turn though, so no more pressure on the board. We haven't seen a single ball lightning yet. That would have been quite good in this scenario, assuming I don't have a counter spell for it. Passing the turn here and step a bolt. Yeah, this is getting problematic, you know? Okay, playing a counter spell on the bolt, I can understand this. You don't wanna go below 10 against these red burn decks. He's gonna tap three. Okay, there's another Granite Gargoyle. They're doing so much work here for, uh, for Yurian, you know? It's another threat that I have to deal with, and if I can't, I mean, it's gonna be problematic. Tapping four, Control Magic. Okay, that's pretty good. Especially since we're playing Monocolored here, right? So it's really tough for Yurian to find an answer to an enchantment, so he probably has to, you know, bolt or chain lightning his own Gargoyle. And that means it's a two for one, so I'm fine with that. The only problem here is that I did have to tap out, so I, I no longer have counter mana up. So giving a little opener here to Yurian to uh, to do something spectacular, playing out a mountain first, taking two points of damage because of the Ankh, dropping to 16. Tapping three, what are we gonna see? There's a Jalem Tome. Okay, I was scared, I was really scared for a Bull Lightning, but it was a Jalem Tome. And there I found a, a Granite Gargoyle of my own to put there on the control magic to just make it clear. Playing another island. Look, I mean, that Hank is doing so much work against me. I'm on 10. Anyway, attacking Yurian here with my 2 2 flyer. So I'm gonna put him on 14. Tapping 3, play out the Timmy, the Protocol Sorcerer. Tap to deal 1 damage to any target. So hopefully, you know, I can put some pressure on Yurian's life total. I don't feel very secure at 10 here against his red deck. Three cards in hand now for Yurian after draw. There's a Bull Lightning. Oh, and unfortunately for me, the Timmy, okay, I got a counter spell, that's good. Because what I wanted to say is, unfortunately for me, the Protocol Sorcerer has summoning sickness, but luckily I have that counter spell. Or else I would have taken six more damage, I would have been on four. That would have been really problematic. Now I'm still on 10. Attacking for two here, so I'm gonna put Yurian on 12. Gonna tap five air elemental perhaps? Okay, a pirate ship. Yeah, pirate ship is one of those cards. I just love to play with it. And I know, especially in a mono color tournament, it's pretty bad, right? Cause it's a four three. It cannot attack if your opponent doesn't have any islands. So, I mean, in this format, it's probably not gonna attack a lot unless I play against other blue players. 
But still, you know, I think it's good. You can tap and do one damage to any target. Of course, I wish it had more than three toughness because now it's always in bolt range. But let's see what my opponent's going to do here. So he's got two cards in hand. And I mean, I'm on 10, right? He wants to focus on just dealing as much damage to me. But then again, he's on 12. He knows he's going to take another point of damage from the Tim at the end. Going to go to, uh, to 11. So he's going to tap to, okay, he's going to use his book to jail him tone. So it's let you, let you draw a card, but then you've got to discard a card straight away. It's a card from Antiquities. So he's going to discard to detonate. Detonate is great, but I think in this format where you don't have a lot of artifacts, ooh, this maze is really good. This maze is really good. It does take two damage away from him because it's a land. That's a bit unfortunate for Yurian. So he drops to 10, then the damage from the uh, Tim, he's going to go to 9. But the good thing here is that, um, you know, the maze protects him from the uh, stolen granite gargoyle. That's quite important here at this uh, stage. Attacking nonetheless. Yeah, and I think this is really a moment where I wish I would have still had the time walk. Like I said, I think sometimes I cast a little bit too quick. And here we see Yurian drawing another card. So let's see what he's going to discard. Discarding a mountain makes sense. You don't want to hurt yourself. And that's why I always like like decks with... Oh, okay, this is pretty good. Earthquake for one. So that's at least going to kill the Tim. I can use it one last time. Unfortunately for Yurian, it's not going to kill the pirate ship. It's not going to sink the ship. But it does mean that the Tim is gone. Which saves him another damage, you know. So I'm on 9 here, pinging Yurian for 1 as well with my pirate ship. So Yurian here on 6, so I just need 6 more pings, right? Or if I have a Sayani Blast, that would speed things up, playing a Mox Sapphire here. Just attacking again, why not? And of course we're going to see the maze activation here, but you never know, you know. Passing the turn here. He's gonna draw a card. And then probably discard. Let's see. Yep, discarding a mountain. Passing the turn, so pinging him again on end step. And what else am I gonna do? Are we gonna. Yep, psionic blast. So he's gonna be put down on a one because of the psionic blast. Oh, this is bad. This is bad for Yurian. I'm going to drop to seven myself. And he's on one. Does he have a bolt for the ship? If he doesn't, untap upkeep. There we go. Killing him with a cannon. And there we do see a lightning bolt though. So I'm a little bit confused. I think he could have played the bolt on the pirate ship when it was still tapped. That would have, I think, saved his life. Maybe I'm missing something here, but that looked like the right play to make. Anyway, winning here game number two. But like I said, stick around because we did play a game three. And if Yurian can win that game, he still earns a point in the tournament. So stick around as we go to game number three. Game number three. Here we go. Let's see if Yurian can manage to, you know, get a win out of this. Or am I going to have a great start of the tournament with a 3-0 victory? We'll find out at the end of this game. The last one of this match, both starting with the basic. And let's see what Yurian can do. Really cool playmat, by the way. Old Man of the Sea. It's also a play group here in the Netherlands. They uh, play in The Hague, Den Haag. Really cool bunch of people. I see them a lot during the, uh, the tournaments here in the, ne the Netherlands, of course. So there's a second mountain, a second island from me, and we're just passing the turns over to each other. Which I guess is good for me as a control player if we take it slow. Tapping three. There's a Jalem Tome. So the little book again for some card selection. Am I going to allow it? It's always a horrible thing, isn't it, against those counter uh, players, right? That you, you play something and you have to wait and see what's going to happen. Anyway, play out another island. Tapping a blue for a soul ring. Four mana, I can do a lot with four mana. The question is, do I want to do something? I guess I don't, just passing the turn. So 
So let's see what Netter Shadow can do. That's his nickname because he loves that card. He loves the Netter Shadow. He's built several decks with it. The cool thing about Netter Shadow is that it's got haste, you know, as we would call it today, which is quite an exceptional ability to have in old school. There are not a lot of cards with haste. Bull Lightning, for example, is another one. That's a really cool card. It's got these unique abilities. It's just, just not good enough. That's a problem with the card, but still really cool to kind of try to build around. Anyway, we're not going to see that today because he's playing Mono Red, playing an Orcish Artillery here. We saw that in game one as well. And actually, Artillery is not too bad against my deck because I'm playing with four Tims and they really don't like the Artillery. No counter magic from me, by the way. So I was kind of expecting maybe a counter spell on the uh, Artillery, but maybe I just don't have any counter magic. Six cards in hand. It looks like I'm going to play something out. Playing a Time Walk. So again, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Not quite sure. This Time Walk just seems like another like way to put some more lands into the game. And that's it. I think I can take more out of the, uh, the Time Walk. But uh, okay, passing the turn. Five in hand. I mean, I do have tons of mana. If I can like find a Gem Day Tome, I'm, I'm set, you know. Anyway, Chain Lightning here. Also using the Orcs Artillery, but this uh, this time to just attack with it. It's a 1-3 creature, so I'm dropping to 16 in total. And there's an Often Troll, countering the Often Troll. Which is not, I mean, it's not great. It, it's, it's a good thing I got a counter spell if you don't have another weapon against it. But I'd rather use my counter spells for something uh, more valuable. Playing a Ghost Ship here. So a little bit surprised, to be honest. That I countered it away. It, uh, maybe the ghost ship was a top deck though. That could be the case. Or else I think I should have just kept my counter spell in hand. Also because I've got a lot of blue. So it's easy for me to regenerate the ghost ship. Remember for three blue you can regenerate it. So there's another mountain by Yurian. So he's got five now. We know he's got some very expensive cards in his deck. right? We haven't seen a single Inferno. Now do remember Inferno is six to cast. No seven even. So he needs more mana for that. But I mean, five mana should get him a long way with, with casting most uh, most of the cards in his deck. He's got a pretty full hand there. But he's going to use the book. So some more card selection. He could, of course, use the book just to try to find his chain lightnings and bolts and kind of kill me that way. That's not even a bad strategy. And they're discarding the uh, Earthquake. I mean, that's an interesting choice to make. And the reason I'm saying that is because the Earthquake is a way to deal some, some direct damage, right? So what he could have done, for example, is play an Earthquake for two and think, you know, I'm ahead on life. So I'm just going to try uh, to deal as much damage as possible. And of course, not for three, because you don't want to destroy your own Orcish artillery, I guess. Ooh, look at that. I'm going to attack. So dealing two points of damage, it does mean I'm kind of opening myself up to the factory. Okay, I got a strip mine for the factory, it seems. But now, of course, he can attack me with the Orcish Artillery next turn if he wants to. I wonder if he wants to use the Artillery now at the end step. He is going to do that. I think that's a good decision. I mean, he's kind of the burn aggro player, right? So he's taking three damage as well. So he's dropping to 15. I'm on 14. Tapping three. Ooh, there's a Bull Lightning. That is really good. If I don't have a counter spell for this... I'm in trouble. Because he can then hit me for six. I would drop to eight. He can also attack me with the artillery. I will go to seven. I mean, he can just animate the factory, give it a go. Worst case scenario, I'm going to use the strip mine against it. That's not too bad. Let's first see if it resolves, though. Yeah, it does resolve. Tapping. Oh, I got an unsummon. So this unsummon at least is postponing the problem and now at least I know that he's got a bull lightning so on summon really good here two cards in hand here for my opponent what else can he do no passing to turn for a moment there I thought he wanted to do something and I think Yurian is close but this was just very unfortunate for him that I had that on summon Control magic. Am I going to take over the Orcish artillery here? That would be a first. He's going to hit me for two. 
so I'm gonna drop to 12, but he's also gonna drop to 12 because he's gonna take the damage. So I'm gonna take over the artillery and now I can swing in for two as well. I can put him on 10. I'm not attacking though, but of course I'm not. That is because of that uh, bull lightning that he's got in hand. For a moment there, I thought, why am I not attacking? But that makes sense. And of course the orcish artillery, by the way, is a great defense for me against his bull lightning. So I can untap next turn, keep it untapped. Let's first see what he's gonna do. Another chain lightning. Is he gonna kill the artillery? He is. And I'm always happy when I see like a red player using the chain lightnings and the bolts on creatures instead of like on my life total. That's usually the sign that you're doing well. He's gonna use the tome here. I mean, that tome is quite good. I would probably dump the bull lightning because yeah, I know about it already. You could argue that keeping it in hand is good because he's kind of forcing me to keep my, my ghost ship untapped, but I mean, you got to move on in life, right? I really wonder what that other card is that he wants to keep. Anyway, attacking for two, so he's going to drop to 10. So for the first time, I believe in this game three, he has less life than me. Ooh, that is tough. A Chaos Orb. Am I going to flip on the little book? It looks like I'm going to do it. That's a hit. Yeah, flipping here on the Jalen Tome, so he's going to lose the Tome. I mean, I get to play because my main concern should be like a huge Fireball or something, which I'm sure he plays. Um, you know, then again, you could also consider like keeping your, your Chaos Orb or something else. I mean, the Jalen Tome is okay, but it's not like a super card. So it looks like he's, yeah, ooh, look at that. He's got a Chaos Orb of his own. Not really a good target though, because I can simply put a regeneration shield on my ghost ship. I mean, that ghost ship is kind of tough to deal with if you think about it. A Fisher would be really nice. So Fisher is a card from the dark, and I'm not sure if he's playing with it, but it buries a creature, meaning you cannot regenerate it. Regenerate it. It's an instant for two red and three. Ooh, this is interesting. A Lance Edge kind of coming out of nowhere. I didn't expect the Lance Edge to be in this deck. Wow, but that's actually quite good. So Lance Edge allows any player, it's an enchant world, to discard a card at any time. And if it's a land card, you can deal two damage to any player. So now, um, you know, every mountain is basically a, a, a lightning bolt light, right? It deals two damage to the face. Same thing goes for my islands. Attacking here, gonna put uh, Yurian here on, I believe, eight, right? Exactly. And here you can see how good the ghost ship is if you have a lot of mana. Like if you play it earlier in the game, it's still good because it's a 2 4 flyer for 4, which I think are good stats. Um, but later in the game, it's really easy to keep the 3 blue open and just constantly have this regeneration clause. There's the gargoyle. We're seeing a lot of the gargoyle in this match. Mana drain though on the gargoyle. So I'm doing this because I want to keep attacking with the ghost ship. Ooh, Wheel of Fortune! I like this move by Yurian. First playing out that Gargoyle, kind of tricking me to play out my counter magic and then play that Wheel of Fortune. And Wheel of Fortune can be so good for Yurian because of that Lance Edge. Now again, it also works for me. So if I can find three islands here, or just three lands, because it's not only basics, it's any land, um, I can kill Yurian. But I mean, this is going to be exciting. We're gonna draw seven fresh cards. Oh man, this is gonna be exciting. Let's see what he's gonna do. Now we can discard these cards at instant speed. So this could be a stack party. Yeah, discarding an island. And he's discarding uh, also a land here. So we're both dealing two damage to each other. Letting it resolve, I guess. Ooh, there's a Hammerheim. So he's going to put me on eight. In response, I'm going to use an island as well. So then we let the triggers go off. So we both take two. Now remember, because I respond to it, mine goes off first. So now he's going to play maybe another island. Chain Lightning to put me on five. He's already on two, right? So next turn. Next turn, I can kill him with the ship. But what he could do, though, is he can flip on the ship before combat, then I have to regenerate it, and when it regenerates, it taps itself. So that can give my opponent one more turn. Assuming I don't have another land in hand. I do though. Yeah, Diamond Valley 
giving me the victory. Oh, look at that hand though. <laughs> Jirian, I, I'm, you were close. I feel like you were close in so many of these games. So it, it, it looks like you've been like demolished here because you lose 0-3. But actually, when you look at the games, you were very, very close. Thank you so much for these entertaining games. I've really enjoyed it. It was super cool to see me using a Ring of Maruth. And finally, for the, for the first time that I can really remember, cast a Volcanic Eruption. That was just the highlight for me in this match and probably in the tournament. Talking about the tournament, if you want to see more of this event, uh, make sure you subscribe to Timmy Talks because I'm going to bring you more matches all the way up to the finals of the Color Clash. So if you like what you see, subscribe. If you're already a subscriber, please consider liking, comment, and sharing this video. All these things are free and really help Timmy Talks move forward. And then you can also consider becoming a patron of the show via patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. The cool thing about that is that for just $1 a month, you get access to the Discord and you can join in uh, with tournaments like this. Like every two, three months or so, I organize an online event and you can join that as a patron. And as a patron, your name will be mentioned at the end of the end scroll, uh, um, at the end of every single video. Let's go to the end scroll.